El gran invitado de honor al Festival de Guadalajara fue Werner Herzog. En reconocimiento a su increíble trayectoria de 60 películas, Herzog recibió el Mayagüel de Plata en la ceremonia inaugural del festival. Dentro de las actividades del Talent Campus en Guadalajara, Werner Herzog impartió la conferencia magistral titulada Viaje en búsqueda de la rareza. Werner Herzog ha realizado ya 60 películas, eh, también ha actuado en 18 películas, sobrevivió en México trabajando como payaso en un rodeo y también este, pasando televisores por la frontera ilegalmente a los 18 años. Le han disparado, se ha tenido que comer un zapato, camino de Múnich a París para ayudar a su amiga Lotte Eisler. It is embarrassing to say that I think I'm the only professional filmmaker who made professional films in all continents, including Antarctica. Of course, my quests, my voyages, my search for images has, has taken me a lot around. And today it is very easy to make films. Technical uh, instruments are, are inexpensive and very professional. And today there is no excuse. And at the same time, I have the feeling uh, you should, uh, as young people starting uh, out in cinema, do some very basic things like travel on foot, cross Mexico on foot, and, uh, because the world opens itself, the world reveals itself uh, for those who are on foot. So I feel a close affinity to people like Hemingway or Joseph Conrad, and including Juan Rulfo. Juan Rulfo was someone who, who traveled all up and down Mexico selling tires for cars, and he, uh, he was a great poet, and Pedro Paramo is, in my opinion, the finest piece of, uh, of uh, not just Mexican literature, but, but all of Latin America. There's no one of, for me, no one of his caliber. And it is, it is this experiencing the land and experiencing the, the poetry behind everything. Some, something, a, a deep vision. And Pedro, Pedro Paramo is a book to which I go back and back and back again. I, I can, whole passages I could recite by heart. I have the feeling that uh, you should, as filmmakers, and I'm speaking to a crowd of filmmakers, I guess, Uh, go into poetry. Uh, when I write a screenplay, I never have. A, I only have a story, and I see an entire film, as if you were seeing it on on a screen. And this is why I write very fast. Irene uh, was written in two and a half days, and I've never written more than one week on a screenplay. But uh, for warming up, for warming up, I would read. Uh, Pedro Paramo, I would read Chinese poets of the Tang period. I would read uh, some of the great German poets. I, I go into poetry, 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 and all of a sudden uh, it comes extremely easy and I just write as fast. I can write very, very fast and I could do a, a screenplay in two days, or, or maybe three days, five days. I've always been somebody who has said to people who want to go to film school, Yes, go to film school, but earn your money uh, as, as a bouncer in a sex club. Earn your money uh, by uh, working in a, in a lunatic asylum. Learn how to forge documents. Learn how to pick locks. How do you open a safety lock? El maestro Herzog concedió muy generosamente una entrevista exclusiva para Cine Secuencias. Uh, of course, I make choices because I know. Uh, Sometimes I shouldn't really waste much energy, but there are moments where I immediately know this is big. Like, let's say, Grizzly Man, which came uh, at me uh, is a, in a complete chain of coincidences. And I immediately knew I have to do this now because it was so intense uh, coming at me. Something I cannot really tell you, how do I make choices? Sure, there are some moments in, in films where you have the feeling like uh, human beings are somehow at the borderline of their possibilities and 
and when you when you are looking at a human being um, under pressure, under duress, under uh, danger or whatever, you probably see deeper into a person, like the same person just cooking a steak uh, at the grill. Uh, it's a little bit like um, uh, understanding uh, a metal. You have an unknown alloy of metal and you will understand the nature of this metal if you put it under extreme heat, under extreme radiation and under extreme pressure all of a sudden the, this piece of metal reveals its inner nature and it's a little bit sometimes as human beings we function the same way and you cannot really explain how poetry for example poetry all of a sudden illuminates us cinema can do this as well in rare moments and i'm trying to find these moments and it's always moments which are beyond the sheer facts. You see, my, my cinema is not really that much fact-oriented. Oh, I make no documentaries. Yeah, number one, it's all movies and most of them are feature films in disguise. They pretend to be documentaries, but they are not. I do things where I even invent facts uh, and where I stylize and where I uh, put the audience into a moment of complete uh, fantasies and I take them seriously and they notice it. And in these moments of illumination, yes, they are possible, not very often. And um, I'm trying to find these moments. It's a very, very complex uh, uh, sort of thing. It has to do with storytelling has to do with images, has to do with grammar of images, has to do with music, poetry, and, and very often uh, you have to understand how to allow the audience to develop a separate story, a separate reality in your hearts, uh, which is beyond somewhere outside of the film. There's also, it's not just storytelling. Storytelling always means to create a secondary story inside of an audience. Well, in Heart of Glass, yes, uh, actors are playing under hypnosis, but so deep under hypnosis that they would open their eyes without waking up. Um, it's just uh, part of the story. It's Bavarian myth, mythology, it's, it's folk legends. Uh, of course, it's my real Bavarian film. And all my other films, including, by the way, Fitzcarraldo, are also Bavarian films. Also Aguirre? Yes, Bavarian. It doesn't matter that I leave my country, I never leave my culture. You filmed in Mexico City so about a pilgrimage? That's that, uh... Yes. Uh, Can you tell us about Well, I was fascinated by the, by the pilgrims. I was fascinated by La Virgen de Guadalupe because I think uh, Mexicans, uh, yes, they are Catholics, but deep in their heart, they are something else as well. Uh, they love and venerate the Virgin of Guadalupe, and it has such a uh, incredible, has such an emotion, such an intensity, such a deep quest of the heart, and it's so visible. So I, I shot a film there.